So here we go. President Joe Biden wrapped up his five-day European trip in Finland yesterday with NATO's newest member. Finland ended decades of diplomatic neutrality in April when it became the alliance's 31st member. The move was also significant because the country shares 830 miles of border with Russia. President Biden yesterday celebrated Finland's membership and NATO's united front against Russian President Vladimir Putin. Mr. President, at this critical moment in history, this inflection point, the world is watching to see, will we do the hard work that matters to forge a better future? Will we stand together? Will we stand with one another? Will we stay committed to our course? This week, Finland and the United States and our allies and partners said a resounding, loud yes. Yes, we'll step up. Yes, we'll stand together. And yes, we'll keep working toward a stronger, safer, and more secure world. President Biden delivered those remarks in the very same room in Helsinki, where former President Donald Trump met with Putin almost exactly five years ago. That day, then-President Trump famously sided with the Russian president's denial of interference in the 2016 election, going against the findings of American intelligence. Yesterday, the president drew a sharp contrast with his comments about Putin and the state of the war in Ukraine. Putin's already lost the war. Putin has a real problem. How does he move from here? What does he do? And so the idea that there's going to be what vehicle is used, he could end the war tomorrow. He could just say, I'm out. But what agreement is ultimately reached depends upon Putin and uh, what he decides to do. But there, there is no possibility of him winning the war in Ukraine. He's already lost that war. Hey, John Heilman, uh, the White House was just absolutely delighted with the contrast. I was told very early on, politics is all about contrast with your opponent. The White House could not have been happier to be in the same room five years later where they believe, and most Americans believe, even most conservatives believe, Donald Trump humiliated himself in front of Vladimir Putin. The contrast could not have been sharper, could it? Could not have been starker, starker or sharper, Joe. And I, I, I think... You know, he didn't humiliate himself. I think even for people who supported or wanted to support Donald Trump, there was never a moment where it was more clear, unfit for office than with that moment. That was a sh it was a shock, literally. Even for people who thought Donald Trump was uh, off the off the chain and and like crazy and and intemperate and a lot of things, that moment was on the world stage was a moment where a lot of people who were trying to give Trump the benefit of the doubt said, "Uh oh, we're in trouble here." And I, I'd say another thing that I think the White House is delighted with, and I, I'd be delighted if they were too, people, you know, banging this kettle drum all day long. Joe Biden is senile. Joe Biden right. is infirm. Joe Biden has lost his mind. Joe Biden needs, you know, all that stuff. He's seven hours yes. uh, ahead. He stands up there. He does have the press conference went for more than an hour. He's taken hard questions on foreign policy and looked pretty good. Great speech look, the night look, before. Look, you gave a great Not speech. like he didn't have a tough schedule Not, the day before. Right. Tough schedule, tough traffic. He gets in there, does a long press conference. Not only is the contrast with what Trump did five years ago, just in general, the guy's up there handling questions on the world stage uh, and, and without really missing the beat. If I, if I want to run a tape to refute the absurd notions of Joe Biden's senility or his infirmity, I run this tape, if I'm the White House, and say... That guy is doing better uh, in this space than and, almost and, than any of us yeah. around this table could do with this. At that, and, 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 yeah, and on top of that, that. The, the, the economic news of this week and inflation. I that's, know. A, that's a pretty good double. Win, for win, Biden. win, Jen. And I'm um, looking like what he is, a statesman on the world stage. Yeah, so much winning. Just like exhausted by all of the winning. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was, it was, uh, there was uh, the speech the night before um, and Lithuania was, was commanding the press conference. And even to go back a second time to the Finnish reporter who continued to question America's commitment uh, to Finland as part of NATO. And he's like, no, no, let me like, let me go back to, to what, you know, let me go back and correct you. But I also want to notice it. Anybody know who decided that the trip would end in Helsinki? Because it was a genius move. You know, that's yeah. actually not 
clear to me if it was the White House that said, hey, I know, let's go back to Helsinki five, same place, five years to the same day, room. same place. It just couldn't be a more, or if that was, you know, if that was baked uh, from the Nordic leaders themselves, but either way, uh, <laughs> and still just like so breathtaking that moment from Trump. It like I really actually, was. I still gasp when I hear it. Me too. And that contrast for Biden to be, you know, not just, Defending, not just showing American leadership, but also just be so great at, um, you know, at nailing that speech and that press conference. So, Joe, how does he continue this type of momentum in terms of um, not just the optics, but a real kind of generating a sense of, of having complete control over the situation? What's different at the NATO well, summit? <clears throat> Nothing's different. And that's the thing. I mean, I will, I will say this, Mika, following up on what you said a couple of days ago that got, mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, it got you in red on the Drudge Report, which is pretty big when they give you the red headline. Uh, they do have the that. scheduling better. They, they do have the scheduling better. Uh, and I thought it was important for them to say, hey, you know what? He's been going night and day. We're going to let him take off for the dinner. Of course, plan that ahead next time. Uh, but but little things like that make a big difference. But look and of at course, this, for any Joe, it, Joe, for, for, Joe, for any look at this. Yeah. Everything here is tightly produced. It's beautiful. Yeah. Right. And he get everything right. here allows these world leaders to do what they do. And there's no concern about the small things. And I would suggest that what I said that I guess put me in the red is taken seriously when he comes back home, because oh, this no, no, president no, 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 is it. good at what he does. Mm -hmm. And these I've always events... told people... Mm -hmm. No, I've just always told people that he's... The president's very sharp. Uh, he, he, if if, if uh, you, you say something or write something, there have been times he's called, uh, and uh, he's refuted it uh, very sharply. He's... Uh, I've, I've talked to foreign leaders that have had conversations with him that said that he was on top of every issue and uh, to the degree that they were actually some 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 NATO leaders have told me they were very surprised the contrast between the image in mm -hmm. public and the Joe Biden behind closed doors uh, because he is so sharp and he's on top of everything. So much of it has to do with presentation. I will say also for any Trumpers that are saying, oh, my God, they're talking about how we may need to take I a know. rest every once in a while. Please, Please, you're talking about Donald Trump, who did nothing but sit in his office and watch cable news all day. The executive time, would we like to get the well, I'm sure we could go to Mar-a-Lago. He probably has them shoved in, in drawers, uh, his, his all of his stuff. But but Gene, let me just say, if we were talking about style over substance, that would be one thing. We're talking mm -hmm. about matching reality with perception. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Bill Clinton had a, had a, had a great saying, oh, which was, if a turtle shows up on top of a fence post, it didn't get there by accident. NATO did not expand yeah, to exactly. historic uh, 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 lengths. Yeah. Uh, and have ex it power by accident. It was Joe Biden, yeah. along with his equal partners, uh, that masterminded this. But NATO allies will tell you they look to America for leadership. He did this. History yeah. will record this, whether idiots on the Trump right uh, 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 online want to admit it or not. History is going to report this, that this is... This is pretty remarkable. You 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 look at the economy exploding. Mm -hmm. uh, just just like Obama rightfully got credit uh, along with Bush at the end of the term for helping save the economy. Joe Biden's going to be credited for moving us beyond one of the great economic crises of our time, which was of course uh, COVID. Post COVID, it looks like we may have a, 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 a pretty safe landing here for an economy. Mm -hmm. And I just say, this isn't happening by accident. And if, yeah. if people want to focus on him falling on a sandbag or falling off of a bike, that's fine. Mm -hmm. but, but while they're talking about that, Joe Biden's making, you know, Europe safe for democracy.